Thank you so much for having us and welcome to cashless payments <laughs> and all that entails. But first, honestly, I really want to say thank you to each of you for coming out, taking a step in your day, the beginning of your day at that to come and join in the discussion. Thank you to the Salem Chamber for providing this avenue. So we know your time is valuable, so we're just going to jump right into it. And so let's get our brains going. And the first thing I'm going to say is when you hear cashless, what comes to your mind? And not necessarily my cashless pockets <laughs> like yours. That has to do with the grandkids and not solutions. But we'll jot down a couple of things. Cashless, don't think about it. What do you think about? Plastic. Plastic? Plastic what? Uh, cards. Okay. Scary. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, fees. fees. Yes. Yes. We'll go to the red. Fees. Anyone else? Security. Security. Okay. Or insecurity, depending on your perspective. Okay. When you think about think about your daily activity, when you cashless, when you don't have cash, what what do you do? Credit cards, all right. Debit card. Mm-hmm. And sometimes then that would be like that when watching people pay with their phones. Mm-hmm. All right, we're rolling here. <laughs> Anything else? Discomfort. Discomfort. That falls under scare. <laughs> <laughs> this one is really stupid, I think, but gratuities. Knowing Gratu how to give a gratuity when you're doing the cash. Okay. Okay. All right. I think we were on a good roll. Yeah. And so let's see how how well we did. So when we're talking about cashless, just simply that, the absence of coin, the absence of paper currency, we're using electronic means um, to conduct our financial transactions. So we have, let's see what we did. We set our credit and debit cards, mobile payment apps, online payment systems, digital wallets, contactless cards, the QR codes, um, mobile banking apps, and cryptocurrencies. These are all part of cashless. So we're going to, we'll talk about each one of them. The most popular being, and probably the one that's been around the longest, are the credit cards and the debit cards, the little plastic cards with the magnetic strips and the little electronic chips that we use. Um, the vendors love them because it's an instant, you swipe, it goes to my merchant services, and goes into my debit card. It's not, it's not a lot of fuss. It's really simple way of getting your money quickly. Mobile payment apps. So now we're moving into the uh, Google Pays, the Samsung Pays the lot of pays. I've come across different stores. Everybody's instituting a new pay. Um, so that's where you utilize those smartphones. You hook up your debit cards, your credit cards to your Samsung pays, your Apple pays, the Google pays. And you're in the store, you pull out your phone, put in your coat, tap, and you're out the door. So that's increasingly popular now. You have your online payment systems. For those of you who may be like me with grandchildren, younger children, you are familiar with Cash App and the Zells, um, those types of Venmos out there where you're registering um, your online systems to your account. And so you can transfer mostly person to person, we utilize them. PayPal is a good way, and that's a, a very popular way now. You hook up your PayPal so the regular person will log in with their debit card, credit card, go through the PayPal, and then transfer 
the funds to you. Then we have the digital wallets. And so at this point, you think about anything that you carry in your physical wallet. They could be loyalty cards, the rewards points, those ShopRite cards, all of those things you carry. Most of the time, you may leave your wallet at home, but you necessarily don't. You remember that cell phone when you're walking out the door. So that's another way of keeping, of managing all of your different cards. The contactless cards. Using those debits and credit cards now that have the RFID frequency on it where you just tap and go. You don't need to stick, you don't need to remember your password, your codes, tap and you're out the door. The QR code payments. I don't know if anyone realizes how frequently you see the little code now, that QR code. I was sitting in a restaurant, we received the bill and I thought, oh, well, it's probably a survey at the bottom of the receipt. But lo and behold, you scanned it with your phone. The opportunity, the link to pay your bill came up with the QR code, put in my PayPal I used because I wasn't, I don't know about this here. And one, two, three, we were out of the door. Watching home shopping networks, infomercials on the television, they want you to scan the little QR code that leads to ways for payments and purchases. Um, then we have our mobile banking apps. Just like the First National Bank of Elmer, we have mobile banking apps where you can utilize your Zelles, you can transfer money between accounts, you can set up bill payments. So that's another way. And then cryptocurrencies. So although we don't usually use those in our day-to-day, -day, everyday transaction, cryptocurrency is a way that a lot of that some vendors utilize to make your electronic transfers. There are some stores who have actual, they have your ATM machines and they have cryptocurrency machines as well. So, and, but always remember that although um, we're moving to this cashlessness, we want to utilize all of these forms. We're using them because they provide convenience, their speed, they, um, a secure, the security portion of it. There are some businesses that still maintain or rely heavily on cash. So cash may not be king anymore, but it still has a need, a role in society. And also there are people who don't have access um, to some of um, the ways to utilize. So we have to make sure that um, we are utilizing everything that we're able to do for the convenience of our customer. Um, so this is really what we consider cash. And, we, and this really touches base on things that we talked about. Yes, it's scary, it's the unknown. What happens, what ifs, but that's why it's good to network and how the chamber has a part in that because I'm speaking with someone who may utilize this and they can answer some questions because they have real time experience in it. Um, we'll touch about the different fees, um, the Venmos, the phone pays, how to feel comfortable when you need to add gratuities, dispelling some of the myths that help us with the discomfort, taking away some of the scariness in it. So we'll move on to preparing. Um, so I think when I think of um, cashless payments, I think of convenience. I think a lot of people today, they decide that they want to use the cashless payments because it's so much more convenient, as Charlene mentioned. Um, I went this morning to Wawa, bought my coffee. I didn't have to have my purse. I didn't have to have my debit card. I just have my, my Apple Watch. I double click and I pay for my coffee. I'm out within two seconds. And it's secure because it's an encrypted code. So for me, cashless means convenience. Um, but preparing your business for payment apps, um, so a few different ways that you can do so is you would choose, um, choose a compatible payment app, a, a point of sale system. You would set up the payment, the contactless, contactless payment terminal secure payment processing, integrate payment APIs, and that's just a soft software. Um, you would train your staff, 
promote acceptable payment apps, update payment policies, test transactions, monitor and adapt, consider loyalty programs as Charlene mentioned earlier, stay updated. You want to incorporate a security and compliance program, so you want to make sure that you are following all security and compliance when you, you initiate these type of programs. And then customer support, of course. So if a customer has an issue, you'd want to be prepared on how to solve their issue or resolve their issue. Um, by carefully preparing your business to accept payment apps, you can offer a seamless and convenient payment experience for your customers while staying up to date with the latest trends in payment technology. So we actually partner at the First National Bank of Elmer with a company called Elevon. They offer a variety of different options. And some of those are, a, a lot of those are the um, terminals, the contactless terminals. There's software systems that you can use on your actual point of POS platform system as well. So if anybody's interested in that, we can definitely get some information over to you on that. Alrighty, so you've discovered different ways that you can utilize cashless payments with your business. You've invested in the software or the materials, um, the hardware to utilize it. So the next step is really getting your customers to buy into using it, acclimating customers to the payment apps. So I think before we even began here, some of the conversation was, I'm not sure if I want to use it. I don't know what it is. Hmm. So if that's how you're feeling, that's how your customers will feel as well. So how do we acclimate them? We have to educate them. We have to provide clear communication on how to utilize them. We have to build the confidence. So acclim uh, acclimating your customers to the clients using payment apps involves the education, clear communication, providing support. So we have to understand what we are providing. So you become knowledgeable and therefore then you're able to share this with your customer. So the strategy is you want to create awareness. Some people may not know what Venmo is. They may not know what Zelle is. They may not know what contactless anything is. They've never heard of that. Some people are just starting to use debit cards um, and credit cards. So part of that strategy of educating them is providing the awareness. How do you make them aware of what you're now offering? A lot of it is visual. When I'm walking into a store, I'm seeing a symbol now of uh, Apple. What is Apple Pay? I'm, I'm seeing symbols of waves for contactless cards. Um, you're providing clear instructions. So you're making them aware, but you also are the avenue of how to introduce them, how to teach them to use these technologies. So it takes time. And I know sometimes in a fast paced environment, you not, may not be able to say, okay, well now take out your card, turn it over when you have lines that may be going out of your door, but maybe it involves having demos where they can step to the side or another employee can take the time to demonstrate this. Um, we're using, so you wanna make sure and your staff is trained as well. You want to also maybe offer incentives. Well, if you, you, we'll give you 5% off if you use this system that we have for the first week or for the first time, whatever may be the incentive. We'll buy you coffee tomorrow, whatever it may be. Highlight the benefits. So you're, you're emphasizing the convenience. I can walk in, tap, and go. You're in here for five minutes. I know you're running late, but you can still come and order the Tai Chi Latte Pate, <laughs> whatever it is, and keep going. Um, address concerns, because everyone has concerns, just like you displayed. The scariness of it, the discomfort, the unknown. Um, utilize your social media. It's for those who have platforms where you're on Facebook, where you have websites, advertise those logos, advertise that we are now offering such. Put your demos maybe on the sites themselves. Offer your customer support. Gather feedback, just like you would utilize each other. Um, 
use your products yourselves. Use the contactless payment solution. So therefore, you can say, you know, I had that very concern. And for instance, I would walk into the stores like Wawa, and I would be with my daughters, and they would pull out their phones, and, and I'm going, wait, wait, where's my card? Where's my... And one day, I didn't honestly utilize it until we began offering it at the bank. And I said, well, I have to be able to say that I use it in order to get you to use it. And I was in the store and I said, okay. And I'm nervous. I'm like, okay, I brought up my phone. I brought up the Samsung Pay, put in my code, tap. And they're like, thank you. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> then I said, oh, I forgot something I went into the store for. So I said, should I do this again with my one little item? I'm like, yes. Tap and go. So I've become a tapping animal on my Samsung Pay now. So you and buy in, you utilize it. And I have to agree as far as training your staff on how to, to show the customers how to utilize it too because we'll take we'll go back to Wawa. I don't know how many of you have been into Wawa and you see now that they have their own little self-checkout stations and you'll see people in line. There's t lines everywhere. No one's using these little self-checkout stations because it's new, it's scary, and nobody really knows how to use it. But you watch the other um, customer service rep come over and say, here, I'll show you how to use it. And they kind of engage them and show them how to use it. And then those lines start to go down. And every, every time I go in, it's less and less because people are now educated on how to use the self-checkouts. Just being proactive um, and utilizing the customer-centric approach, you can successfully acclimate your customers to using these payment apps. So I want to ask, how many of you have been in business a long time? So for several years. Hundreds. Hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen where you may not use cashless payments now or you've started moving toward them? Why did you do so? Was there a demand from the customers? Was it something that you were seeing that piqued your interest? Were you trying to help move your processes along. So is anyone using any form of cashless payments? No. It's all I use. I think I started, um, when you started, I started seeing every store that I walk in, like <laughs> the Apple Pay, the Google Pay, and if anything, it's more convenient now, and I feel like it's, most of my cards are at home and it's in like a safe and a security box now, because mostly everything's on my phone. I'll have, like have one or two in my, like, in my wallet, but. But when you do everything on your phone, aren't you afraid when you lose your phone or somebody steals your phone? There's everything right there. And that is, and I don't know if you want to say, one of the number one concerns. That's why I... And one that I had as well until I realized, and you're probably a little more educated in, than I am, but each time that I pull up my Samsung Pay, it does require me to put in a code and it changes what they call the token right. each time. So that security features. So if I found a phone and I played around with it and got it open, it changes the token. I still would need to have my specific PIN number to right. utilize with each I, of the cards. Most of mine, it requires my face. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. my face ID has to unlock it in order for me to make the payment. If my face isn't there, then it won't process. So we started using a numeric code as well. You know, I go from my phone. I know I have to go and put in uh, six seven eight three seven five. Oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> Fix what? <laughs> uh, but if I don't have the facial recognition, it comes up and it asks for that six digit code. Which, unless they're putting bamboo shoots under my fingernails, I'm probably not sharing with anybody. But you share it with us. Go ahead and try it. <laughs> <laughs> it just looks like an honest face. You know? right. I just started using the fingerprint. Do it like four times because apparently it changes. You know, so yeah. So if you if you're having difficulty getting in with your fingerprint that's embedded into the phone, it's definitely not going to recognize someone else. So that's kind of 
a way to feel a little bit more secure, but as Charlene had mentioned, when you have those thing, those cards in your wallet, it's encrypted. So I don't know, have you, when you go to the store, have you ever looked at the receipt and it'll say the last four digits of the card number. When you use your digital wallet, it creates a different code for each transaction. So that last four digit changes with each transaction. Yeah. <laughs> I guess um, the reason I'm here is not because I need more so a clone. You know, get the customers to use it. I feel as somebody my age, I'm thinking anyone under 30 is using a whole different technology and probably under 40. And I don't know those technologies. So, I mean, I have a square that I use for credit cards. Mm -hmm. But, and I don't have customers like lined up at my place for anything usually. But, <laughs> um, but, so it's more, I want to be able to use technology that I have no idea what it is, and that's why I'm here today, so perhaps that's the next step of what you're going to talk about. <laughs> oh, and so, well now, have you entered the world of PayPal? I use PayPal. Venmo? Okay. Not Venmo. Okay. PayPal and Square. Okay. So you, you, are, you have your feet in already. But it's the other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely understandable. Um, so anyone else use? We have the credit cards. We have the PayPal. Yeah, we have nothing. And, and, you know, I think about it. I've looked at those Clover and different things like that. It's number one, the fees. What, what kind of fees? Because mm -hmm. it's a cemetery. It's a nonprofit. We're not trying to make money. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to lose money. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then the Venmo sounds great. The young kids today don't even have checks. Mm -hmm. I mean, we I run with the EMT schools, and they come in there to pay their fees, and they have nothing. They don't. They use their cards and their phone for everything. So tell them to go get a money order or something like that. But so showing my age. How, how, <laughs> so how if you're a business that the business doesn't have a cell phone, how would you have Venmo on something without like a you know that might use Venmo for my phone. But how do you do it for something that doesn't have a cell phone? How do you do that? <laughs> like, so you still, I guess they can still take their phone and go to the terminal, right, and do a credit card transaction. But it's, they're thousands of dollars. They're not, it's not a Wawa coffee. So I, mm -hmm. I haven't done anything. So that's why I want to find out. Mm -hmm. So I know um, Zelle has been becoming more and more popular as well. Um, a lot of small businesses will use Zelle. And I'm sorry, What's it called? it's called Zelle. So it's a person to person payment. So it's okay. really, most times it's instantaneous. Um, there are limits to how much you can, so I'm not sure what, would you normally go over a thousand dollars in transactions? So maybe that might not necessarily work in your situation. So maybe having a terminal that has the contactless. Right. Um, there are fees associated with those uh, terminals and um, syst point of sale systems. Some we've seen some businesses who will actually put the fee onto the customer. Yes, yeah, is, is that legal? As long as you're disclosing the the fee. But no, also when you're doing the person-to-person -person trans, um, transactions, if you're using Zelle and Cash App, you are registering your account via your telephone number, via your email address. So it's not necessarily that you have to have a mechanism, some type of machinery in order to activate it. Someone will go on to the app itself and say, okay, I want to send money to John, his his text, his cell phone number is 666-555. What was that number again? <laughs> uh, and then I've been, John having registered that particular uh, cell phone to his account number, will send the money directly. Um, so that's one way to negate. So in those instances, you really find it's more a person to person, um, especially because of the dollar limits um, and the fees associated. Um, you. I'm sending money to John, I'm sending money to Jane over here, um, more so than utilizing for business purposes, although you may find Venmo and the PayPal um, for those purposes. But you're really registering 
online, um, you're, you're adding your credit cards to your profiles. So PayPal, you don't necessarily need a terminal for that as well. Okay. So fees associated with payment apps can vary depending on the specific app, the type of transaction, and the country or region in, that you're in. It is important to carefully review the terms and conditions of each payment app to understand the fee structure. Um, some of the common types of fees you might encounter would be a transaction fee. Um, transaction fees can consist of a percentage of the transaction plus um, a dollar amount. So some, like Elevon, they might charge 2.99% for each transaction pr plus a 30 cent fee. But that's in the terms and conditions when you sign the agreement. Um, there's cross-board fees, so that is if you're receiving payments from customers who are in different countries. I don't know if that really pertains to anybody in here so much. But again, that would be in your contract if you signed a contract for um, any of these point of sale or terminals. There are... In the European prince that's always wanting to run money through the chamber. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you get those too. Yes. <laughs> Still. Um, some payment apps offer the option for instant transfers, allowing you to access funds immediately. However, this convenience might come with an additional fee, and that's also going to be in a, any contract that you would sign. So, yeah, it's very important when you, if you decide to implement any of these systems that you really read through the agreement and make sure that you know and understand the fees that are associated because there can be different fees depending on the transactions. Some merchants will um, charge an inactivity fee. So you just want to make sure you read the fine lines for, for your agreement. So handling disputes with payment apps. I say pretty similar. You have a customer that comes in, maybe they're not satisfied with the product, maybe they say they've been double charged. For some reason, they're coming in and disputing this transaction. So you want to make sure that A, you, you um, when you're speaking to the customer, you want to understand what the issue is. You want to stay calm and professional so you can really listen to what the issue is because that will dictate how you handle the situation, whether it's internal, whether it's deal with your business per se, or if it has something to do with your terminal or the process of payment itself. So this is where Kim talked about you needed to pay attention to what your fee schedule is, what your agreement states. You have dispute resolution terms in your agreements as well. And there may be times when you have to utilize the third party of, of customer support from whichever communication or whichever process or merchant service you're dealing with. Um, so, and sometimes, unfortunately, it may take, because you have to deal with another party, really communicating with your customer to get them to understand that resolution may not be quick. It may take a few days, um, whatever the resolution may get. So staying calm, really listening, understanding, communicating with your customer, getting clear information, negotiating the resolution, resolution, documentate everything. Keep your receipts, communication emails that you may have with the customer support, um, conversations or emails or any type of correspondence with your customers. Um, that may make the difference between whether you're in compliance and allowed to get your money back or whether the customer gets their money back. Um, just remember to always handle disputes professionally, as I'm sure you do, whether it's with cashless payments or not, or with cash payments or any other type of um, services that you provide. So just remember, these things are always tied into your agreements that you have with your merchant service provider. Mm -hmm. How frequently do disputes occur? Well. It really depends. It depends because it, 
it depends on the circumstances. You have gas stations, uh, uh, that's a number one target. So a lot of times they'll be compromised because maybe there's a skimmer that's put into their, their gas pump and nobody realizes it. And now you have a data breach and multiple customers are affected by that. In a smaller setting, I don't see that happening, but it really just depends on the circumstances. So if you have a terminal that you, you have, you're the only one that has access or it's secured, which it should be, then the risk of somebody compromising it and needing to dispute things is gonna be minimal. So uh, it probably makes no difference, but is there any secure difference between the tap, the insert, or the slide? So the slide is the least, um, the least secure, okay. where the EMV chip is encrypted, and the the tap it has what is it called? Um, the, the radio frequency. Yeah, the right radio frequency. So the terminal itself has electronic; it's electronically charged. So when the card taps it, it like initiates that charge, and then it it, it encrypts and sends that one-time code for. So between the three, you're best off with tap. Yes. Okay. Tap and go. Tap and go. <laughs> because you think about it, somebody can put a skimmer inside the, the, the section where you would insert the card. Which is one of the reasons I always have my customers that said, try to use the same when you're doing Get receiving cash when you're utilizing an ATM, try to use the same machine all the time because you can see if there's any nuance, little difference because people attach skimmers or readers. So when you're inserting your cards or swiping the card, someone may activate a camera somewhere where they can see you and putting in your PIN number. Um, so the tap is great because you're tapping, there's nothing you're typing in, the codes are sent out, so it's a, a less... Uh, uh, a less way to, to penetrate getting those cards nothing duplicated. Is nothing nothing is purpose. Yeah, it, it's absolutely, bad. absolutely. Because unfortunately, some people have determined their career is to steal your money. And so as things progress, they find alternate ways. So we keep progressing. Right. So we should as have that well. technology available for tapping. I, I, not every place. Mm -hmm. that. Contactless, it, mo most terminals now, newer terminals, yeah. it's available to you. But yes, I, th I, I think it's a great idea to implement. If you're going to start use accepting credit card payments, yeah. I would make sure your terminal yeah. has the contactless feature. I'm sure we do. It's one of those things I should know about. <laughs> I'll have to look at it after the fact. <laughs> okay. So just in the discussion, are there any um, cashless tools that you may be interested in that's caught your attention to say, you know what, maybe I want to try it, or that sounds like I need a little more information, hmm. Any of the payment solutions? Well, I guess I'm, okay, so I already Mm -hmm. or send invoices for things. But, and I know Square had problems like a week ago or so with closing them down and everything, but like if somebody comes and has Apple Pay or Samsung Pay or something, is there a way to use that payment type on the Square or is it, I mean, do, do I have to have all of these different pay options mm -hmm. downloaded somewhere on some device? That's a great tables. question. So you, you're walking around with multiple, <laughs> I need this, I need that, I need yeah. this machine. I mean, if I send somebody who comes in with Venmo, and it's like, mm -hmm. I think that's a little easier, but I just haven't gotten into Venmo. But, um, so does your Square, when you accept the payments now, do you, you is it contactless, or do you have to swipe it? Well, I have, or I have the thing to swipe. I've got the little thing that you can do contactless. And I'm, I'm just, that's why I was playing on my phone. I was trying to get into the Square app to see what's there, and I'm not getting where I want to get. But, so, um, 
So I guess. So if it, if you have the if that accepts contactless, you should be able to accept the digital wallet, the Apple Pay, Google Pay, Samsung Pay. That, so those things. So that's that's, that's, that's considered digital wallet. Okay, yeah. So digital wallet. Because uh, paying through your digital wallet, your watch, your phone, that's a contactless transaction. And you usually find your waves, like the Wi Fi yeah. signal, you have that on. Yeah. So that would be the mechanism, the vehicle that you would tap to use the phone or the card. So no, you don't have to walk around with 12 bags mm -hmm. because I want to Apple Pay, Samsung Pay. I want to take contactless cards. I want to use this. It's all down but to you, your one machine. Yeah, and you'd also want to check your agreement too because some agreements might not include specific transactions and that could be one of them. I'm going to ask stupid question number 73 here. Every time I get gas, I always tip the attendant a dollar. And oh. I say that in front of everybody because I used to do that when I was a young man in high school mm -hmm. and all. And I know at the end of the shift they have to reconcile whatever the difference is. So giving them a tip helps them reconcile what the difference is because everybody runs over by three cents or four cents and they have to pay it at the end of the night and out of pocket. Oh. So well, I do this, but that can't be done when I'm using the debit card Okay, now I keep a stash of ones in the mm -hmm. console. Now somebody's going to break into my car mm -hmm. today, right? <laughs> <laughs> what color? <laughs> Not enough to make it worth breaking in. But uh, in gratuities in general, I mean, when you go to a restaurant, there's always a line on there, so you can put it in and so forth. Mm -hmm. But the cash gratuity kind of thing, is there any way around that with any of this? Again, that's going to be based upon the software that you choose. So, <laughs> so depending upon what software or terminal you choose, you can have that option for gratuity. Yeah, I, I don't foresee gas. it though at the gas station. No. Yes, yes, yes. But uh, when you are utilizing at restaurants or different, yeah. they. Um, in fact, have you been? Have you ever um, been seated at a table that had the little kiosk or the yeah. little Apple bar? Piece. Yes, yeah. and <laughs> then you slide over and it gives you the bill, and then it has. Move it over, mm -hmm. which tip yeah. line? Didn't you, I can't get it just right. And then you tap. So those type of machines, that will give you the opportunity okay. tip. But unfortunately, I think you have to keep your stack of dollar bills. Okay. <laughs> I, I can manage that. <laughs> Are you feeling a little more at ease with using some of the cashless payments? Still a little confused about some, how they use door. <laughs> now we, I walked into work one day and we do have a new credit card machine and people come up and just stick their phones they're training me mm -hmm. oh, here, here let's get it right haven't had the watch yet we got the the tap but it's just a learning process I, I guess the machine got it all under control and we just do what it tells us or mm -hmm. So remember, there are always instructions, there are guides, there are demos, there's customer support. So you as the vendor, as the business utilizing these services, you want to get well educated. They have the tools to teach you. So as you're watching others, there'll be a point where you go, oh, wait a minute. No, just push this, tap that, get out. So feel confident in that you're never just left alone to say, here's Here's machinery, here's the software, use it. There's always a system for education, for support. And as far as if, if you've utilized the digital wallet on the phone for customers, it's the same process. So uh, my, my uh, watch has the same wallet icon as my phone does. So when I double tap it, I choose which card I want to use. And it's the same process. It depends. It depends. So, do you? Excuse me. 
Do you mind? And also, my yeah. My two-year-old niece was when I visited her last weekend. She's like pulling do up her phone oh, and she's oh. got her credit card right there. And I'm uh -huh. like, do why you, on earth would you have your credit card? Can you not have, I have the bank? bank. So it depends like, on what which, type of phone you use. See? So if you have your iPhones, you're usually using what kind Apple of, Pay. Is this an you have Samsung, Samsung Pay. You can bypass and use Android. Google Pay. Okay. Um, so I when you so upload those wallet, okay. those uh, instruments, that allows you to put in your cards, your information. So where that wallet? So you're putting oh, okay, it into it. that pay see, system right. itself. I didn't know what it was. You manually put it in. Yeah. Um, and so it so says there's that a will problem. Be it. So once it's in, it's in. So when you have your phone, you just swipe yes. up generally to that iPay system or Google Pay system. Your card will be there. It'll ask you to put in your PIN number, issue that token, and tap. It's a unique characteristic. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you still in wallet? Summer. Mm. Went to a yeah. uh, lobster. I don't know what it's do. I don't know if it has service. Mm -hmm. And they did not accept credit cards or debit mm -hmm. cards. So it, it will probably just well keep turning. So I just hit wallet place, and do what it tells me. It, it it'll step walk you through um, the steps. So sometimes you can take mm -hmm. a picture of your card. Sometimes you'll type in the information. And then usually since you've never used that before, there's a verification process. So you'd have to call a number that's provided without to authenticate that this is you and you want to add it to your wallet. Mm-hmm. And that triggered mm -hmm. when you said vacation. We had a customer call and said they lost, um, they left their, wa their card at home. They were in a position they needed to make this transaction. They are away. It's like, wait a minute. Have you ever used your Google Pay or Samsung Pay? Or did you download? Oh, yes. Use your phone. Yeah. So it can save you in a jam without having that physical card that worry about it as well. And the limitations for um, having your cards on the Samsung Pays, Google Pays, are basically the same limits that you have on the actual debit card. So if you're limited by the number of swipes or your daily transactions for the day, they still apply. So a lot of times it's between 2,500 and 3,000 per day, depending on your institution. Okay, so responding to fraud involving payment apps. Um, so step-by-step step on how to handle fraud. You want to identify the fraudulent transaction. Um, that's very important. And it's also very important to remain calm because customers usually when they, they find fraud, they're upset and they are scared and they want their money back immediately. So remain calm, identify the fraudulent transaction. You want to gather all the information and then you'd want to contact your customer support, whomever they give you when you initiate the service. Uh, secure your system. So if it is through a company like we use, Elevon, you'd want to notify them immediately there has been fraudulent activity associated with the terminal. Um, you want to notify any affected customers. So if there were a breach, you'd want to make sure that you get a list of the customers that could have been hacked so that you can notify them. Collect any ev evidence, um, cooperate with the payment app. You want to initiate a refund or chargeback if necessary. Review and approve, improve security measures. So that kind of goes back to when you have a terminal, you want to make sure it's secure. So usually at the end of the day, if you are leaving, you'd want to make sure it's locked in a secure location that maybe only one or two people or trusted individuals have access to. That can minimize the risk of having any kind of reach. Educate customers, monitor for fra further fraud, and then you wanna update your policies and procedures. So um, a, a reason that you would update that would be something like, oh, well, I closed the store last night, but I left my terminal out in the lobby and somebody was able to access it, or I walked away and somebody was able to access it, so they were able to um, put a skimmer on it or something like that. So you'd want to change your policies and procedures if that were the case. So you're kind of saying that every night when we close up, we should lock up our credit card machine? It should be in a safe location where nobody has access. 
even throughout the day. It shouldn't be where. It's like on the counter. Put your counters behind the counter. Right. You don't have people coming behind. Right. So as long as it's in a secure location that customers don't have access to and it's being monitored. Um, do you, in the, where it is, do you have cameras on that area? So you'd be able to see all of those things. And so for my little business that I'm just using my iPad or my phone to take money and it goes home with me, I'm like, this totally doesn't. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So it's really important to always stay vigilant, educate your customers, take immediate action when fraud occurs. Um, so that you can minim minimize the impact of the activity and maintain trust from your customers. Do you guys have any questions? So those of us who don't regularly use this, mm -hmm. um, what are the baby steps that we should, I have a Venmo account, I've used it twice. <coughs> I don't really have that many occasions where I think I have to use it, but what would be good ways for me to start doing that? Do you vend most grocery store or you just debit? I mean, which is a better way to go? So I, I don't believe most grocery stores that I've been to, they don't accept Venmo. Okay, so then that's, that's the <laughs> I, I know when the nail salon that I use, they'll accept tips that way through okay. Venmo. Um, they have a credit card machine that they actually charge their customer the, the fee. So if I use my credit card or my debit card there, I get a 3% fee on top of that. And then they don't accept tips on credit cards. So yeah. they use the Venmo or the Zelle. So it really just depends on what you're looking to do. Um, a lot of times grocery stores don't accept those yeah. type. That's yeah. And I, I, I'm sorry. So another dumb question. I know where the debit money comes from. I've already gotten back. Where's the Venmo money come from? Out of my debit? Out of my bank account? Or where's that come from? It's coming from an account. So if so your personal Venmo money is yeah. coming from your account. And so going Venmo is linked to your bank account. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. So you <laughs> help you figure that out. Yes. I was thinking the same thing, Jesse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so once you remember, you are setting up. You are telling Venmo. You're telling Zelle. You're telling Cash App exactly where you want the money to come from, and how. So you can have it hooked up by a debit card. You can have it hooked up by your routing number and checking number. So it's specific to how you you are in control. So it's not a random Venmo, oh, let's see which account we're going to take it from. You are in control to say, this is where my money is coming from. So we're from. having bingo at ReStore, mm -hmm. and people Venmo Shana. Mm -hmm. So it's coming out of their bank account, and Shana, how, does, how do they know? It's whatever account she has set up for that Venmo. So... I think what your question is too is how it goes back to how did Shana set it up? Did she say utilize my phone number, utilize my email address? So you don't know my business, you don't know my account numbers, but you know my cell phone number or my email. And so that's how you'll send it. And then I have set it up to say if I get this by email, send it to this particular account. Wow. So Venmo and Zelle are similar. I know at least Venmo, mm -hmm. like when I kind of looked at it a year and a half ago mm -hmm. or something, tended to be using it like family members, friends to friends versus... Correct. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I didn't More person to person. person. Yeah, but it's more people you know mm -hmm. versus a customer coming off the street. Correct. Maybe. So that's kind of the same way with Zell then too? Or yes. Okay, so you... So and, and That's a different thing than the, thing, the Apple Pay, Samsung Pay. That, that's correct. Pay. And so with those avenues, you want to be very careful that you are sending it to don't dial every code 609 when it should be 856 because whoever's phone number that is, if they have it attached, that's where the money's going. And it's really difficult to, um, to zero chance of getting your money back. And usually there's a backup. A lot of times if it's somebody who just starts using Zelle, for instance, mm -hmm. they're going to send you a text message saying, a, a Zelle transaction is being sent to this person in this amount. Do you want to authorize it? So you would have to actually authorize it as a second security step 
before that payment would actually go because it, it kind of builds a profile and kind of sees what your normal activity is and if you've never used it, it wants to be certain that you are in fact trying to send this payment to this person. I'm seeing a trend that, well, at least when I, get my, when I take my car to get service, um, they, if I'm using a credit card, they're going to charge me a fee as well. So they'd rather, but if I use a debit card, then I don't get that fee. So how many places are adding the fee, I, I having to have to pay the fee? Um, It's because the merchant doesn't want to take responsibility for those fees, so they're mm -hmm. putting it onto the customer. We have an HOA fund in the neighborhood I live in, and I'm, I'm one of the officer, officers in this HOA, so I'm to blame. But when we collect, there are a number of people who want to do it by debit. Well, there's a fee that goes with that, and we're in a very tight nonprofit kind of entity. If we don't send that back to the person who wants to use the debit, that means I've got to charge it against everybody else. And our budget is so tight on those kinds of things that I, I think it's ridiculous, but it's the way it is. So I write the check rather than uh, do it on the automatic banking. Yeah. You, you want to be careful of the vendors you use because some people are still throwing on that 3% COVID fee. Yeah. Um, so it's up to um, the businesses that, um, whereas some things may, if they take it to a certain level, may be illegal, they do have some leeway of what they're able to add on in terms of fees. But yes, generally because they don't want to pay their fees, their processing fees, so they try to pass it on. So are there fees with like Venmo, Venmo and Zelle? So that might depend upon your agreement as far as accepting those contactless payments okay. for the the merchant. Okay. Um, but as far as the customer, no. Now, we tried to use Venmo for Rotary members to pay their dues and, and all these kinds of things. We were told that there was a fee because we we're considered a business, mm -hmm. whereas there's no fee when it's person to person. Okay. Mm -hmm. Am I correct on yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah, so you, you'll it's, find, it would be on the yeah, you'll find businesses like my daughter was getting married and um, the person was doing the cake, make sure you don't put anything about wedding in the memo notes <laughs> because they'll charge me <laughs> <laughs> for business purposes, okay. so, yeah. And I've noticed more and more businesses are charging the customer the fee. Right. And you'll notice, the you'll notice it says convenience fee. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? All right. So we've we've talked about the different types of contact, uh, well, cashless solutions, so to how to get them set up, um, some of the fees, things that may be associated, how to deal with some of the disputes and fraudulent activity. So we've come in, we've scratched the surface of, and of course you will have other questions and as you continue to research. Um, so you will find our cards in your bag, you need a bag <laughs> as well. Feel free to reach out or to your financial institution um, that you're with now to explore because it is convenient, it is safe, it speeds up your lines. So great thing to introduce. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you for you. your time.